welcome back. With us we've got our playful Shelties, Lewis and Dana. Now Shelties have this gorgeous fluffy double coat. They've got quite rough hair on the outside but underneath it's really soft, which just means that they can adjust to different temperatures, warm or cool. Now they will need brushing at least once a week and if you want a coat that looks this flash, probably once a day. Well if your dog or cat at home isn't looking too good, it may be a signal that something else could be wrong. In our next story, our vet Jeff checks out Molly, a cat who's losing its fur. Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to House Calls. Today I'm here to meet Beth and her cat Molly. Molly's 14 years old. Beth, are you in? Come in. Molly is a mature tortoiseshell moggy. She loves to relax and stretch out. Although she's a happy cat, Beth's a little worried about her bald patches, which she's had for six months. What have you done? Have you tried any treatments to see if it'll get better? About three months ago, um, she had a steroid injection. OK, so she went off to your vet and she had a steroid injection. And what happened? Did that seem to help things? It helped a bit, yeah. She, uh, the fur started to regrow and the scabs on her oh, bony belly went away. That's interesting. So I would wonder whether there's something making her itchy uh, that's causing this problem. Now let's see, I'm just going to try and get a little bit of a closer look at the skin. Good girl. So what, what I can see, I don't think she likes me at the moment, but we'll just keep working on her. Maybe I can just charm her into, uh, into being nice. But I can, I can see that her skin looks healthy. The skin's soft and pliable. There's no, no injuries on it, and there's just a really fine down of fur just poking out from the skin, which makes me think that there's fur still growing in this zone, but uh, for one reason or another, it's not lasting there. And I think her tongue is wearing the fur off. And you can see down on her tail a similar little zone. And uh, she's not entirely happy, but she's being pretty tolerant for an old girl. So what I want to do now is try and just pop her back up on the table. Just try and have a little look at the rest of her. It's important to have a, uh, a physical examination of the whole cat. We're not just looking at the skin problem. Quite a lot of tartar on those teeth. You can see a big build up of tartar, so that's, that's a problem for another day, perhaps. Lymph nodes feel fine. Feeling through her tummy. Tummy feels good. Just back up under a rib cage to check on her liver, and her liver doesn't feel enlarged. So everything seems pretty good there. So now I'm just looking at the rest of her, her coat. She's got a nice, uh, thick, lustrous coat. Uh, no sign of dandruff in there. Okay, so I'm just going to show you now a really simple little technique for checking your own cat for fleas. We're going to do a little comb out test, try and find some flea dirts in her coat, and I'm going to comb it onto a wet white paper towel. So these, these flea feces are really just digested blood, and as they melt into the wet towel, they form a lovely red wet stain which just spreads out, and you can tell easily whether this is a, a grain of dirt or something from the garden, or whether it is effectively digested blood coming out of your cat. You can just see that slight discoloration. It's very small though, so it could be just a tiny bit of flea dirt there. My little flea comb out would suggest that she hasn't got any fleas, so that's not the, uh, that's not the answer, I don't think. So I think let's have a look in her environment, have a look around the house, see if we can get any more clues. She sleeps on my bed every night, next to my head. Lovely soft duvet, four or five pillows, lots of soft cuddly toys. Plenty of uh, options here for house dust mites. Yeah. And she spends a lot of time here too, I guess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really think we understand what's making Molly overgroom. My recommendation here is that I think it's time that Molly went back to see her veterinarian. And I think uh, maybe another trial of that steroid might give us a better idea whether she's going to respond. And he may also want to take a skin sample, take some hair shaft samples and have a look under the microscope and make sure that there's no sign of any mites uh, or any, any other external parasites. I think the, the take home message is that Itchy, overgrooming cats are very, very uh, challenging cases to sort out, and they require a lot of effort from both the veterinarian and also a really committed owner uh, to try and sort it out. But I'd be pretty hopeful that um, that Molly will uh, improve. And the good thing, uh, in summary, I think, is that it's not a life-threatening condition. It might be a bit frustrating, but you know, she's not going to die from uh, having a slightly bald tummy. 
Well, Shelties are quite active dogs, and being herding dogs, they love to chase things around. But they just as easily adjust to your activity levels, so perfectly happy lying by the couch as well. The dogs are such great fun, and if you're thinking about getting one, or another animal for that matter, a responsible place to start is the SPCA. Here's how it's done. When pets are preparing to go through the SPCA's adoption service, vet checkups help make sure each one is ready for their new home. Just like Paige, who was left at a vet clinic after her owners suspected she might have a deadly disease. The disease was found to be a stomach upset. Once it cleared up, Paige was rehomed with a new family. Adoption fees will vary from branch to branch, and dogs will also need to be registered before they go to a new home. Adoption animals are de-sexed, vaccinated, microchipped, wormed and flea treated, as well as having a vet checkup. To find your local SPCA branch, for more information, go to the website. After the break, Jeremy gets close to an insect the size of a mouse 